hey guys, I thought it would be reasonable for me to do this BAM assignment as well. So I am going to work on uh, Mancala and I'm gonna work on it from scratch. So what I have open right now are two tabs on my screen. I have NetBeans, which is my IDE. I'm gonna be writing in Java. And I also have Draw.io, which I'm gonna be use, uh, using to make diagrams as I'm kind of fleshing out the design. And I'm gonna uh, use kind of a UML diagram format, a UML diagram. Here's a little walkthrough tutorial that you might want to check out at some point. Uh, is a kind of like a standard for how to design software. Uh, do really use for making classes and stuff. I'm just gonna kind of use something similar. So uh, let's get started. I'm gonna take a container here and I'm going to call this Mancala. And I wanna define what Mancala is. And I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. So I'm going to add some text to this box. And uh, let's see, to play Mancala, basically you set up the board. Oop. And then uh, while, let's see, the game is not over. Oop. The boops help, by the way. Uh, we are going to then say, uh, play around. All right, so what I've done is I've taken the definition for one thing and broke it into three. And let's just format this a little bit differently. I'd like to, I might need to make this full screen to have the menu pop up. I wanted to get this left aligned. Well, where did the left aligned go? I don't see it anymore. All right, it's going to have to just be centered. Sorry about that. So uh, here is my definition of main column. I'm going to set up a board. I'm going to... Uh, find out if the game is over. If the game's not over, I'm going to play around. So let's make this container a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to define some more containers. So what does it mean to set up a board, for example? Uh, what does it mean to check if the game is over? Game over. Oop. And one more. And I might have to zoom back out a little bit just because I'm running out of space here. And let's do another one for uh, playing around. So what does it mean to play a uh, round? All right, and I should be able to add connecting lines in here, I think. Let's say, oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty. So we'll add one there. I don't want to mess with that up, but I broke it already. I want to add another one down here. There we go. And let's add another one. Boom, all right. So uh, to set up the board, what does that mean for Mancala? Uh, I would guess we're gonna have to, um, let's say create the board, right? This is gonna be a place to uh, put things. Um, maybe I'll even make fill the board with uh, stones, a separate line. So we'll call them fill the board stones and let's also say just initialize eyes um, you know players whatever that means that'll just be like my, my catch-all for anything else that I have to do to get the game started we could probably make these a little smaller and tighter uh, game over what does that mean uh, let's see the game is over when all the stones are gone from one side uh, I don't know if I need to break this down into other steps. I think I'm just going to write myself a comment here. So and I'll write it in my block comment form for Java just to kind of imply that uh, I'm, I'm writing the instructions rather than the pseudocode. And uh, let's see, the game, uh, the game is over when uh, either the player side or I want to put or in cap. So Whenever I have control statements or logic statements that stand out, uh, it's nice to, to emphasize it. It helps when we're translating into our actual code. So the game is over either uh, when either the player side or the computer side uh, has no more stones. All right. Nice. Oh, we need to turn text wrapping on for that for sure. Oh, my gosh. What am I doing? I usually use lucid chart but I ran out of my free um, 
let's see, my free program, so I'm not sure where to. Oh, I should probably go to text. Oh, and there's the left align too. Look at that. And do we see any wraparound for text? So the good news is I can... No, I can start left aligning everything. So I at least got that going on for me. Beautiful. Uh, but I don't see any way to wrap around. So I'm just going to have to go back in here and do uh, shift enter, I bet. There we go. So shift enter is a nice way to enter a carriage return in the middle of text when whatever the program is doesn't let you do it any other easy way. All right. So there's my big comment for game over. Let's make this thing small because it got huge and then play around let's decide what does it mean to play around well i guess the first thing we have to do is uh determine uh whose turn it is so how are we going to do um let's see how about uh how about we do this if oh, we're doing this a cap if it's uh player's turn player's turn I'm going to actually just leave that as a, an applied variable because looking up whether it's the player's turn and the uh, or the computer's turn really shouldn't be something complicated. So uh, if it's the player's turn, um, player turn, and then we'll make a method that is the player. And else, it's going to be the comp turn. All right, and then something that is easy to forget to do. Well, I didn't want to do that. Something that's easy to forget to do, and I want to make sure that I have it in here somewhere, is some kind of display. So if we're thinking about our game uh, being text-based or even if it's graphical-based, at some point you want to update the display so that whatever's happening in the game actually goes to the, the player. So I'm going to say either the player takes a turn or the computer takes a turn, and then let's say uh, display the board now actually i want to change i'm going to take that back i'm going to display the board first because i think you probably want to be able to see the board before you start going now uh, i certainly haven't designed everything but i got enough here that i feel like i can start actually building a computer program with it so let's actually switch over to netbeans now and take a look at that and i'm going to move me over to that corner so i'm not blocking the screen i'm going to make a new project and this is a job application all right we're going to call this mancala all right and here we go we're up and running so main method i'm going to finish my entire program really quickly play mancala boom done already wrote my main method now i get an error message because Playman call doesn't exist. I got to write that method. So let's go up and we're going to do a public static void play Mancala. All right. And did I spell it right? Mancala. Oh, Manacala. Nope. There we go. Nope. Even worse. Mancala. There we go. All right. So now I got a working program. And before I do anything else, because I want to make this part of my habit and routine, I'm going to go ahead and put my Java doc block comment in. Now, there's no return. There's no params and no tags go in here. And I'm just going to write a short comment that says, uh, um, let's see, runs the game and Kala. Very descriptive there. All right. Now, my playing and Kala method, we already have figured out. We wrote it in our UML diagram over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is call the method set up the board. Boom. Then we're going to say while not game over. All right. So now since I'm going from pseudo code, which is over here in the actual code, I'm using semicolons. I'm making sure I put my curly braces in. Uh, we're going to play around. Boom. All right. Now, each of these are giving me an error message because they don't exist yet. I got to actually make them. I'm just going to bring this over a little bit too so we can see it better. So let's make each of these methods. I'm going to run up to 
up my program, give myself a little space, and let's do public, which right now just make everything public. We'll talk about why you would have a private method, but that won't really come up until we're talking about classes. Static, again, everything's just going to be static for right now, and we'll understand why these things are static and why other things are not static uh, later when we're talking about classes. And set up board doesn't uh, have any implied return, so I'm going to make it a void and set up board boom 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 and i don't really know what i'm going to do here yet so i'm just going to put my block comment on and say uh sets up the uh, board so the game can be played excellent all right one error down let's do the game over method this is going to be a little bit different public static and because it is in a control statement because I have game over as the uh, condition for this control statement. I know it must return a boolean, so boolean being true or false. Game over. Boom, boom, boom. All right. And now I put this note here, so I can actually put a block comment here that makes a little bit of sense. And when I go to type in my block comment this time, you'll see it comes up a little bit different. I do my double star enter, and then because I have a return type. Uh, NetBeans knows that I'm returning Boolean. It'll it'll put that tag in for me. So I'm going to say it returns true if the game is over, false, otherwise. And I'm going to put as my general comment here about the method, uh, the game is over, and this method will return true. commas here because this is English uh, when either or both sides of the board uh, have no stones left excluding the store all right I might I could be more explicit and say no there's stones left in the pits all right, there's my definition for a game over. Now you can see it's giving me an error message at the end because I said this method returns something, but I'm not returning anything. And I just want to get my error messages gone right now so I have some nice working uh, program to start from. So I'm just going to say return uh, false. The game is never over. You play for infinity. And lastly, play around. Let's get that method written. And you'll probably notice I keep going all the way up to the top of my program. Uh, I, there is some organizational technique that we might use for our methods uh, at some point, but it's easy enough to copy and paste and cut and move uh, methods around. So right now I'm just making sure I keep my main all the way at the bottom. It's just a nice place to go and find the main. I don't want to have it floating in a sea of methods all over the place. So let's write our play around method. Public, static, void, play, round. Boom, boom, boom. And let me get my block comment in. Uh, this will uh, run one turn of the game, alternating between uh, the player and the computer. There we go. All right. Now, my game doesn't do anything yet, but I can actually run it. And if I run it, nothing will happen. Uh, but it does work. It's not giving me any errors. Uh, something that you may want to do, and this is nice for um, you know, troubleshooting down the line, it might not be a horrible idea to throw in some like um, print statements. So system dot out dot print line uh, starting. Play Mancala. Actually, what I like to do is I'll throw like some number signs in there to make these um, like testing lines kind of stand out. So you can even do this. Start test. And that way, when it prints to the screen, I know, okay, this is a line that is just for testing purposes. And it's really easy to kind of do a search later and just remove them all. Uh, but this is helpful to sometimes put at the beginning and the end of a method so that you can just kind of see the execution of your program in real time. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that in the top and bottom of this method. Uh, 
this is ending play Mancala. We got starting set up board, set up board. We have ending set up board. And let's copy these, make it a little quicker. Starting play round, ending play round, and starting game over, ending game over. And we'll put this return false in the middle. Oh, actually, if I if I put the return false above that, I'm never going to see this message. So I'll just leave it as it is. All right. Uh, again, this doesn't do anything other than give me some structure. I actually see the structure right now if I were to uh, run it. Uh, by the way, it was running that whole time, but because my game over returns false, it just was an infinite loop. So let's run it again. And boom, there we go. I can see the execution. I can see what's happening. And it went really fast. But you can see starting play main call, a starting set of board, ending set of board, starting game over, ending game over, starting play round, ending play round, starting game over. And it's just going to alternate there uh, for forever. So now let's go to my next level down. I have my first piece finished. And in fact, if I wanted to go back to my diagram, I could go ahead and like fill that in green to tell myself, yeah, I, I got that one done. Uh, let's look at one of the next ones. How about set up board? So let's do that one. Set up board. We are going to create uh, the board and we are going to fill the board and we are going to spell create correctly. And then we are, oh, and I deleted the A somehow in there. And then we're going to uh, initialize players. All right. Uh, I think that does it. We can define these three methods. I'll go way up to the top again and just give myself a shortcut. I'm going to go bam, bam, bam. Oop, oop. Boom. All right. And we'll come back to those. I'm not, I'm not too worried about getting the uh, the code in for any of those things yet. But we're just trying to show you that this process, it's, it's cyclical. We're just going to keep going down. And eventually, we might get to something where I think I have a good idea how to do it. So for example, let's go and actually uh, you know, create our boards, because I, I think I know how I want to store our boards. I think I want them to be um, uh, two arrays. But before I do that, I really got to think about scope. So if create board is going to be making these things, presumably my arrays are going to exist in this method, in this setup board method. Uh, but the question is, well, do I need to have access to them in game over? Do I need to have access to them and play around? So let's think about that. Uh, the game is over in either the player side or the computer side is no more stones. All right, I got to look at those arrays that are holding my stones. Play around. Well, if I take a turn, I'm, I'm moving stones across the board. I probably need to get to them and be able to edit them. So I'm thinking these boards that I create actually probably need to be stored up a level. Maybe they need to be stored up here so it can be passed down. But I know when I play my round, I'm going to be editing the board. And when I create and fill them, I'm going to be editing the board. So now there's two places that I'm making changes to something. So if I'm making changes to it, and they need to have access to it in multiple places, it's a really good candidate for a global variable. So let me make our global variables. I'll show you what those look like. So global variables, we're always gonna put way at the top of a program. And I like to put um, a line comment, again, that just kind of stands out, global variables. You should spell it right though. This is not typing class, by the way. And then I'm going to put another 
little bar across. So this just helps me make it really easy to find my global variables when I want to get to them. So I'm going to make a public static uh, int array, and let's call it the uh, player board keyboard, and we'll make uh, another one the C board for the computer. So I'm going to make two different arrays. That's it. I've done it. I've declared. So this is the declaration of a, or really two global uh, variables that are all, both int arrays. And when I create the boards, I'm going to make sure that I initialize them. So declaring just says, hey, I might be talking about this thing. Initializing is actually making them for the first point. So let's do that. I'm going to write my block comment for creating the board. So this is going to say initializes uh, uh, both keyboard and C board. All right. So let's go into here. Boom, boom. Since these are global variables, I now have access to them here. I can write keyboard and it'll come up. Well, let me make it equals to something. Uh, equals a new int array. Uh, let's see, there's six pits in one store, so we make it size seven. All right. Uh, and that's green. If I were to make, say, a, another declaration in here, int keyboard, you'll notice now it's black. Now, the green and the black is not actually a color in the program. It's my IDE trying to communicate with me. When it's green, it's telling me, hey, Kevin, that's a global variable you're talking about. When it's black, it's a local variable. So I just overrode this global definition by making a local definition. The scope of this local definition is just this method. The scope of this global one is the whole Mancala program. So I'll go ahead and take that line back out. I got my P board initialized and I got my C board initialized. So those are now both um, uh, empty arrays of size seven. All right, let's go fill the boards. So I'm gonna make my Block comment, and this is going to say um, uh, fills the P board and C board with stones or per a pit. Um, and we got to decide where the store is going to be. So I'm going to make the store at the end of each array. So I, I haven't really given it much thought, but that is my decision. I can always go back and change it, but for right now, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to put it in my note here. Uh, the uh, the pits are the first uh, six elements of the array. The seventh element represents the store and remains empty. All right. So now let's see if we can actually write this method. I don't think we need to break it down any further. So remember when we go back to our diagram over here, uh, each of these methods could be their own block. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta keep moving myself out of the way. So, you know, I'm gonna have a uh, method called fill board over here. That is Let's see how do I get the little arrow guy, I think. Oh, I keep clicking the text, that's why. There we go. Fill board. And here I'm just going to I can actually take this comment I just wrote and plop it in there. Boom, there we go. All right, so even though I'm kind of doing this out of order, you can see that I should be able to create a nice diagram of my program that keeps track of all these methods and how they play with one another. So let's see, I'm gonna fill these. Beginning to end, I gotta to go to each pit. As soon as I hear the word each in my head, I'm thinking for loop. So for in I equals, well, if I'm starting at the first pit and the first pit is at the beginning of the array, I'm starting at zero. Good habit is I never use hard coding when I can use something different. So I'm going to say I is less than, uh, let's say, p board dot length. 
But if I did, I as less and people are not liked, I'm going to get to the last element. And I don't want to get to the last element because that's my store. So let's make it minus one. And then I plus plus. All right. And uh, I'm going to say for each one of these P board at position I. So the first time through, I'm at position zero. Then I'm at position one. Then I'm at position two. Uh, I'm just going to say equals four. I got four stones in it. And actually, while I'm at it, since the P board and the C board are the same size, I could say C board I equals four. And there we go, my board should be filled. Now, it would be nice to be able to see if that worked. So before I go any further and try to write any more code, I think what I might do is jump down to where we had our display, which is uh, in the play round method. We said when we play around, or it was, oop, here we go. One of the first things we're gonna do is display the game. So let's display the board. Let's write that method so that we can actually see if this is working. So I'm going to, and I guess while I'm at it, well, I won't write the rest of this one because I just want to get, get to displaying it and see how it looks. All right, so public static uh, void display board. All right, and this is a method that you know, we could definitely come back to and improve over time and make the display better, but Let's just say it displays the uh, current board to the console. All right. And what we're going to do is, let's see, uh, system.out.print line to uh, board. All right. And we're going to say for and i equals zero i is less than what we want on top uh let's make the computer on top so we'll put the seaboard first seaboard dot length oh and actually if the computer is going um if we're going clockwise around i actually want to print the, com the computer board backwards so I'm actually going to start with I equals C board dot length, which would be seven. The last index is six minus one and go to I is greater than or equal to zero. I minus minus. And then let's do a uh, system dot out dot print. I'm not going to do print line because I'll just keep going to different lines. I'm going to put a little square bracket plus a C board and the value at that position plus I'm closing square brackets. This way it'll be in little boxes and it'll look pretty. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the P board. The only difference is here I'm going to be actually starting at zero and counting up. So I is less than um, keyboard dot length. And now I don't need the minus one because uh, I'm saying less than here. I did the greater than or equal to in order to keep my, my count accurate. And then I'll do uh, keyboard one. All right, and I'm getting an error. What is it not like? Semicolon expected. All right, so if you're seeing that error, and it doesn't actually expect a semicolon, it probably means that you actually have an, an error on the line above. So this line all looks good, right? And i equals zero i is less than p board dot length. Oh, there's just a zero floating around. That's probably why. All right, so now my display looks okay, maybe? I don't know. Oh, you know what? I'm probably need a print line between here. System dot, dot, dot uh, print line. Oh, let's leave it blank. All right, let's give it a go and see what it looks like. Hey, look at that. Right, let's stop it. So there's my board. Zero, four, 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 zero, four, four, four. Now, you know what? Something I don't like. I wish that the uh, the player's board was like kind of tabbed over so that zero for the computer board was by itself. So let's just do that. 
we will <clears throat> actually know what we can do is we can turn this into a print. I'm going to print slash n, which is next line. So that's my, my carriage return. So watch, I'll show you that still has the same effect of a print line. All right, so it didn't change. But then I can put stuff after it. What I'm going to do is a slash t for a tab. And let's see if it just puts me in the right spot. Maybe we'll get lucky. Nope, way too far. All right, so I'll have to do it with spaces. Let's just do three spaces. One, two, three. And run it again. Hey, look at that. Not too shabby. Now, uh, I don't like that this test round is on that same line. So let's, for good measure, just go to the end of this. And we'll do another. I'll make this one print line. All right. And run. There we go. I got my board. I'm still looping infinitely, but there is at least version 1.0 of my board. All right. Now, uh, I still have a whole lot to do, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video here just because we went through a lot and the focus here was not to, uh, you know, build the entire game, but to kind of show you how to start a project. This, the point of starting the project is to give yourself very good structure. And if you look, I have a lot of methods, most of which don't really do anything yet. But if I need to add something, if I were to say, you know, this game isn't really fun. I can't really play it. There's no interaction with it. Uh, what would be the next most important thing to change? I'd probably say, well, it would be nice to actually have some gameplay. That's probably going to happen in play round. Once I have gameplay, I might say, you know, it kind of stinks that the game never ends. So then I go over into game over. So anyway, I hope this works and you know, I'll add on to it and uh, you know, we'll have the next batch soon. Bye now.